seat out there and see the same service that's going on in here right now. Uh, and all of our business this morning, we forgot to set out the communion cups. So Kenny is coming around right now with the communion cups, making sure that everybody has one. On the communion. It is the first Sunday of the month. We'll take communion on this Easter Sunday as we remember Jesus risen from the dead. Our first hymn today, if you'll get to your feet, up from the great hero. God. 
Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Who would you like to remember in prayer this morning? Uh, Marty mentioned, uh, is it your brother? Did you say it was your brother? My brother Joe? attends Ohio State University, and he was on the intubation tube, and then he got removed this morning, and I have not heard him for about a year. He is Pray for Joe Giannis this morning. Anybody else?
join our voices together this morning. We remember our Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Wait for someone this morning to say, God loves you. God loves you. You're out here on Facebook today. God love you. Blessings to you and your family on this evening Sunday. Good to see you all out today. Thank you for being faithful in your offerings. Thank you for leaving your offering there in the plate in the back and for mailing them into the P.O. box. Thank you for your remembering your relationship with the Lord and remembering your what a special music was great. Bell Choir thing has just been beautiful. Love the music today. Uh, thank you all for helping. We're going to take a moment for Holy Communion here. Everybody get it up? You miss anybody? Everybody get one? Special day today to remember Jesus fulfilling the promises that he gave the disciples. Doing exactly what God said God would do. That's why we're gathered here today to remember what Jesus has done. One a day to remember. Before this whole weekend events happened, that Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room. For one last meal. At the beginning of the meal, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, This is my body broken for you. Take it easy. end of the meal, he took the cup. He said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for the sins of many. Take and drink. And as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Dear Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your love, for your compassion, for your understanding. Thank you for your grace, for your forgiveness, the mercy that you extend to us. Thank you for your love. In the wonderful, matchless name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. This is amazing right here. I just love this. And, and all this is, uh, this is just something else that we Thornville Church, we had a cross like this with the wire around it. We would take all of the palm branches on Palm Sunday and stick them in there and see that. This is amazing. I love all the flowers on this. This is just beautiful. We're going to sit this out by the road at the end of the service there so everybody can see it out there. That is just, that is beautiful. Thank you, girls, for decorating it this morning. We're going to all the flowers on the cross. That is just awesome. Love it. Just love it. We've taken some moments here on this weekend from Monday, Thursday, into Good Friday, and now on this Easter Sunday. We come to John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. And we're going to spend a moment with Mary, Mary Magdalene, who came to the tomb early in the morning. John 20. 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. 
He bent over and saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. Turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples everything just as it was. was in a garden ages ago that paradise was lost. And it is in a garden now that it would, <coughs> that it would be redeemed. But Mary Magdalene doesn't know that. For her, the hobnailed boot of the Roman Empire has crushed her hopes and grounded into the dirt with its iron heel. Her hope was Jesus. He changed her life. And she had followed him ever since. He had cast seven demons out of her, freeing her from untold torment. He had given her life, a reason to live, a place in his kingdom. He had given her worth, dignity, understanding, compassion, love. And he had given her hope. Now that hope lies at the bottom of her heart, flat and lifeless. But something helps her survive that cruel boot. Something resilient, like a blade of grass that springs up after being stepped on. That something is love. Love brought Mary to his cross, and love brings her to the grave, to the tomb now. Because as she wends her way along that dark garden path, she stumbles upon a chilling sight. The stone has been rolled away. The tomb has been violated. Just when she thinks life couldn't get worse, it gets worse. The night gets darker, her hope dimmer, not even a pinpoint of starlight shines. The Roman government, the religious leaders, who did this and why? What would they want with his body. What would they want with it? Haven't they given him a criminal's burial by dumping him outside the city in the garbage infested valley of Gehenna? This place called Golgotha? They put him on display to further mock him. She can't believe what she is seeing this morning. In this violation of the tomb, she runs. She 
find Peter and John and in breathless fragments reports what she saw. These two men ripped through the night of that early morning on a ragged foot race to the tomb. Mary tries to follow, but her, her side is splitting. She'll catch up, she tells herself, when she catches her breath. His lungs burning, Peter stoops into the cave entrance. The wings of the dove gray dawn have extended a soft feather of light into the cave. As his eyes adjust, he takes careful notice of the burial wrappings made rigid by the resin from the spices. The linen cocoon that wrapped around Jesus' body lays intact on the stone slab. Intact, but hollow. Doubt and faith intermingle in their minds, bewildering these two men as they slowly walk away. Mary is left behind, finally making it to the tomb. Tears are her only companions at this moment. She takes those tears with her as she enters the tomb to take a look for herself. And suddenly the woman who was once possessed with demons finds herself in the presence of angels. One that stands at the head of the stone slab, the other at the foot. Have you ever seen a picture of the Ark of the Covenant? It's kind of what it looks like in that moment. This Ark, now here in this most holy place of this tabernacle, cherubim on either end. But this too is the most holy place. She is despondent as she tells them the reason for her tears. And then from behind her another voice reaches out. And it is the last person she expects to see. Whatever the case, she doesn't recognize him. That is until Mary. She blinks away the tears and can hardly believe her eyes. Master. Overwhelmed, she throws her arms around the Lord. She loves him so much. He had been there when he suffered at the cross. Now he is there when she is suffering. She had stood by him in his darkest hour. Now he is standing by her and hers. He had seen her tears. Now he is there to wipe them all away. Jesus interrupts the embrace to send her on a great commission. To tell the disciples the good news. He is risen. I have seen him. I have touched him. He is alive. Words like the letter from 1 John that we read and we started reading at the beginning of the year resonate throughout the Christian community. This thought of having been there. We were there. We saw it with our own eyes. We touched him with our own hands. We were there in the beginning. This is how we know that it's real. Now, love and grace and hope are alive in this woman's life. In his triumph, Jesus could have paraded through the streets of Jerusalem, he could have marched right up the Pilate's door and knocked, he could have confronted the high priest. First person our resurrected Lord appears to is a 
woman without hope. And the first words he speaks are, why are you crying? What a savior we serve, or rather, who serves us. For in his hour of greatest triumph, he doesn't shout his victory from the rooftops. He comes quietly to a woman who grieves, who desperately needs to hear his voice, see his face, feel his embrace. Where are you at in the course of your life here as you have entered this place on this Easter morning? What do you need to hear from the Lord today? Because he's here. And he's real. He wants to touch your life. Whatever you need from him today, take a moment. Stop, pray, ask. Be willing to listen. Jesus is meeting us in this place today. We're going to hear one last hymn this morning. This is what it's all about. Because he lives, won't you stand?
Happy Easter. Thank you. Happy Easter to you. Marty? And I want to thank everybody that donated the flowers for yeah. the and yeah. and uh, yeah. Shane and his wife and, and Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful flowers this year.